welcome to the Global Fashion Workshop channel. I remind you that we release a new video three times a week. Today we have a review of this gorgeous lavender wool coat. Lubova Vanova from Anapa, she's our favorite customer, ordered this coat. Hello Anapa. You'll get your coat soon, don't worry. The only thing we should finish is making a buttonhole and sewing the button because by our design we decided to make a buttonhole and button and the stud front here. I'm going to show you the stud front in detail right here. Well at first I felt it would be better not to make a review of this coat because I think all our coats are the same. I mean not all our coats are the same, I mean we haven't got different garments for reviews, just coats. A customer comes into our private workshop, gets his or her coat, and leaves satisfied. But this coat has some features I want to draw your attention to. Everyone's sewing their coats, and today I'll tell you some tailoring tips that you might find useful. So, I show you this coat today with great pleasure. Let's look at it. First, it has the stud front. Let's look at it. I'm, going, I'm not going to open it and show you now. There's no buttonhole and no button. I'm making this review while my tailors went to buy a button. The collar is Apache. It is a one piece along the front block. It's sewn in at the front block. The angle is made accurately. I will show it to you later with the upper camera. The shoulder dart moved to the neckline. As you can see, the shoulder dart makes this whole piece fit well. First, the shoulder dart creates volume here. This part of the armhole fits perfectly here. The center back, the seam moves into the vent in the side panel. I've told you about what the side panel is. The side panel means under the armhole. It's a classic coat style. Nowadays, not so many people pay attention to it. However, if the coat has a side panel, it will have a better fit than a coat without a side panel. What's next? There are no style lines here. We don't have a style line here. We don't have a style line there. But instead of one side seam, we've got two seams. We have two seams here. Here it is, and the side panel. We can gather some excess right here under the bust and get a better shape because the side panel isn't as visible as a style line. I highly recommend reading and finding some information about the side panel. It doesn't matter if you make your garments yourself or order in a private workshop. It can be a jacket or a coat any outerwear garment with a side panel. I just want to draw your attention to these points once again. The sleeve is made by our method. This is my favorite method. First, we sew the upper part of the sleeve, then we lay the hemline of the sleeve. This method is good because there are no excesses here. We took the excesses and they went inside. We did a little stretch at the hemline of the armhole and look how the sleeve fits. You can't make the sleeve by another method. That's the only way. If you try to find this line in the sleeve beforehand, they won't match at some point anyway. Next, the Apache. This is the Apache. This is not an Apache collar. It's a wide stand that moves into the Apache. Look, it doesn't fold like a collar. This is a high stand. Somewhere at the shoulder line, it folds here and moves into the Apache. You should try to make it on a muslin, and then you'll get a perfect result. I like the Apache that starts with the stand, not with the collar. The collar is good, but the stand, which moves into the Apache, looks better. So I want to discuss with you some sewing tips today. Next, our customer has a big bust. But look at these bust lines. Here's the dart, and occasionally it has a sharp line. But then you can't press it. You can't do anything with it because the dart is reduced by an extra shoulder dart under the collar. So, part of the bust dart moved into this dart. 
This is not a dart divided in half. If it was a dart divided in half, we would get half of the dart here and the second half of the dart there. Where the dart ends, we'd have a knob here too. It wouldn't be pressed. Today I was telling you everything in detail because it's time to look at the garment in detail and talk about volume. It's important information. It's not just a review of the finished coat. I'm telling you the nuances that make it a good coat. Let's talk about the bust dart once again. The bust dart is here. Of course, the mannequin and Lubov Ivanova have different shapes. Do you see? This coat looks different on the mannequin. So, for example, our bust would be right here, right? This additional dart from the shoulder made this dart softer. Rewatch the videos about the linen jacket where we talked about the additional darts in detail. Next, the dart starts here and ends here under the collar. We took the separate dart on the collar's fold, just under the collar, because this line doesn't look like a stick. When you fold the one-piece collar, because of this dart, this line here is softened. What else? The under collar is slightly reduced compared to the main collar. It makes the collar and these corners always lay down like this. Sometimes people make the under collar and the collar the same, but it becomes flat like a pancake, like two pancakes are laying here. It's not good. That's why we should work accurately. Everybody knows, I always tell you in every video or a video course, Please, reduce the under collar. You lay the collar on the table and look at it. If our angles go up a little off the table, then we've done everything right. You should learn this point too. Those angles always look down like that. So, I told you everything. I'm going to. Oh, by the way, I made this inspirational set for you, as always. My favorite fabric is this one. It's gorgeous, I think. There are some cashmere fabrics, a bottle green cashmere, a black cashmere, and a beige cashmere. Do you like them? I'm going to take the coat off the mannequin and show it to you closely. Before we send the coat to our customer, we, we will take a close look at it, the stud front. It is the most perfect making of a stud front I've ever seen. It looks like a usual stud front, but it's made fast and easy. We have a mini course on stud front making. We're releasing it soon. In this course, you will learn how to make a stud front like this one. It'll look the same with fasteners, with a lining inside and without rigidity. So let's continue our review. We have many videos at our channel on how to make these angles, not at 45 degrees, but how the wide part lays at the narrower part. This part is wider, this one is narrower. You can see where the angle is and how to find this point. We've got this information in our courses and video. Do you see how the lining is made? Here it's an angle and there near the vent. You will never have problems here. The fabric won't pull here. Even if I pull this part, it will never pull the whole garment. In other words, the garment won't pull the button stand here. Do you see? Here. I think it's enough. I showed you the right side of the coat. Look at this pleat. I don't like such pleats, but someone does. This is the pleat on the back block, which gives wearing ease to the lining. Look, there's no seam here. 
Look at this gorgeous stand. It's about 5.5 centimeters wide right here. This stand moves into the Apache. I showed you this great coat. Of course, the garment and the lining match. They're identical. If everything is made correctly, you will never have any differences between the garment and the lining. It will never happen that something pulls to the lining to one place and the fabric to another. It depends on how com competently all the technological tips are made. I've said a lot about this coat. It's time to say goodbye. Click the like button and share our videos on social media and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. All the best from Irina Paukste and the rest of our team.